فما زلت ذا عفو عن الذنوب لم تزل تجود وتعفو منة وتكرما حبين صلاة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope this podcast reaches you in the best of faith and iman or best of iman um, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to get straight into it because Maghrib is, is very soon um, We're back with episode... Uh, six, well, yeah, yeah, so oh, no, no so idea uh, Hopefully it comes on Friday A lot of so episodes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're back Special guest obviously in the building You can see him, we got Abu Shai in the building <laughs> we got uh, 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 our esteemed big bro and the star Abu Tamim in the building um, quickly, for those who don't know you, just go a quick, quick little intro, even though they've seen you before, but yeah. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, as you know, Ibrahim Abu Tamim Al Mubtasim, um, currently the Imam of Kurdin ICT Masjid, and these are my dear brothers. We we link in Jellof. Best of you, man, Jellof. We got quite a heavy topic, I think, today, yeah? yeah? I think it's fair to say, yeah? Um, so, just to keep it a bit light at the beginning, obviously, you might have clocked, so I called you Abu Shah at the beginning. Yes. Because he's got a bit of reputation. Late night, Tarawi. Man's always got the juice, man's always got a little sign the in the flask. Drink, it's the medicine. The, hot, the medicines. Yes. Man, yeah, so, I thought it was only right that we put that to the test. This is not something we do often. This is like, we've never done this before. But I thought, let's try something a bit different. Let's get my feeling a bit loose. Don't worry, it's just tea in there. <laughs> this, is, this is a different experience it's for different myself. Experience, As so. I said, my hot drink skills are usually me making the tea. Mm. So, but well, they got me on a testing vibe yeah. today. I so. went and sourced the finest, the finest, the finest <laughs> Master Spencer's. Ex- <laughs> tea. Yeah, so, so. I want to see if you, uh, there's two questions here. Yeah? I want to see if you know what it is, yeah? I want, and based on the flavor, I want you to tell me what type of, what type of setting you might make this for. Okay. And who you might make this for? Obviously, that's remember it's a, it's a Muslim podcast. Isn't it? So now this is the introduction to my new business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. That's twenty percent. I want still. No problem. You're confident in it. Very. Uh, he's been cheating as well. I haven't. How, how can I cheat? <laughs> so you start with the number one, yeah. The number one. Number one. Bismillah. They smell nice when I was waking up. They smell nice. I told you that was chamomile, right? Yeah. yeah. Am I right? Not sure, not sure. As soon as I just smell it, but that's a fine caramel. Uh, huh? Because it's not there's in a flat ingredient. bag. There's another ingredient though. Yeah, this, this was the expensive one. Mm. Yeah. There's another ingredient though. Not elderflower? No. Nah. i give you a clue, you know. Hibiscus. Shut up. Mm. What is that? <laughs> what's, what's hibiscus? So, huh? No, nah, it's something simple. It's something simple that it might be, you might have just thought it was something that I put in, but it's part of the, it's part of the blend. You have to give me this one. No one wants to know this. Uh, it's, it's something simple, something simple. It's not a herb or something, it's just simple. Is it sweet? Well, honey. Yeah. But it's not... It's manuka not, it's, honey, manuka honey. To be honest, the, sm- the taste is not... Sh- with honey, if you put it in hot, it kind of goes quick. Jeez. You have to kind of let it set a bit. Mm. Yeah. And manuka is not a tea... It's not, a, it's not honey for tea. It's not. That's you another know, skill to learn. Now this was meant to be a light thing. Man, man is critiquing it. <laughs> I said, my suspense is bad enough, fam. Manuka <laughs> is medicinal honey. Mm. So when you're feeling sick, you you have like manuka. Is that the one that you have? But if you want to have some t- honey for tea, you need to go for the acacia. Acacia. Is, that, is manuka the one that you give people that have hay fever they take? No, but with hay fever, you have to go to the local bee farm. So I yeah. think there's one in Kenton. That's to be water local tea. Yeah. Local pollen and that. Yeah. Some people say you drink nettle tea as well. Mm. Another type of tea. <laughs> so that's the <laughs> camera. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to number two. I think you started with it. Was it nice? Was it nice? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But okay, so this one is before you go to bed. Relax. Mm. <laughs> Wind down. 
dim the lights. You know I'm. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? The, the, what's that? What's that? There's a key ingredient. That's, that's Dear Diary. Oh, that's it. <laughs> That's you know, that, what's that? Relieve the stresses. That's the nine months thing. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how relaxed you are. <laughs> so, uh, it's so good mood, you know. Yeah, relieve the stress, mean. stress relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one smells like lemon and ginger. One more. And it's all weird, see. It's the, the relaxed one, though. That good night one. I thought it was your favourite ingredient, so I thought you'd get that straight away. Wait a minute. No. My favourite ingredient. The one that you, 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 you tell us about the most. Oh, what, it's the most cinnamon. effective. No, no, no. Ah, it's the most effective. There's too many though, bruv. You know the man's they've got too many layers. Just lemon and ginger. What have I told you about? That's in secrets. You know, you told me bare secrets, so yeah, I don't know. The audio listeners are going to be thinking, what is going on? Well, you say, yeah, you taste for those listeners. <laughs> you taste the tea, by the way. You're going to have to give me this one. Ginseng. Okay. Ginseng, bro. That's the. It's not strong though. It's not strong. It's subtle. Yeah, no man needs the. You need pure ginseng tea. One, that one. one's not gonna give it's you the the, the powers. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> it's not powers. It's not powers. No. Like you need the, the, you need the pure ginseng. Yeah, pure. Yeah, red, red Korean. <laughs> <laughs> so wait. So the first one. Wait, so this Lemon one was before like, like night time, relax night. This what one you could have one? in the morning. That's a morning thing, yeah. For energize, energize. Okay, it's not potent enough to not okay. potent enough to give you powers. Yeah, okay, not powers. But yeah. to and give you some energy, energy. to feel fresh. Um, or when you're sick. Of course, lemon and ginger. Mm. Standard, yeah. standard, standard. But it's better to do it yourself. Fresh ginger, raw ginger, African ginger, the small one. Smash it. Don't cut it. Smash it. Break it up like the juices burst I'm out. Wait, I'm waiting for the shot to open, man. Um, the thing. lemon, just slice that. Yeah. My mum's got that in the pot right now. This is yeah. powers, man. Had COVID, it? <laughs> so those drinks is good to have on a general basis, just here and there, mm. especially in the morning on an empty stomach. Um, yeah. Okay. If you, as soon as you get any sniffles. Straight away. Straight away. Mm. I, could, I could put the pharmacist stamp on that as well. Uh, yeah, don't, second, uh, don't wait, season. man. Straight, straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put honey when it's cooled down a bit, just if you need it. Or agave syrup is another option. You? Agave, agave syrup. Must say agave syrup. <laughs> Bro, if you don't know about agave syrup, a natural alternative sugar, uh, Sainsbury's does the best price, two pound fifty. See, this is the thing, I told you, he's got the... What Even with smoothies, you add that to the smoothie as well, a little bit. You only need a little and it will bring out the flavours. Hmm. Yeah, like you haven't had it before. So you, you're, you're not, a, you can't, what is it, you can't do cold drinks? And, no, you can't do water. What is it, you can't I do, can't do water. water. I can't do water. Yeah. That's imagine, huh? I can't, I can't do hot drinks, I just don't enjoy it. Right? I've been trying. Right? I yeah. could drink tea yeah, every minute of the day. Don't it make you more thirsty, bro? No. There's times I've had, I've got, you know, the, f- the three litre press down thing, mm. the thermos app, the, fer- the thermos. For... That's like a party, like a gathering, mm-hmm. dates, everyone's got dates and you just pour in for everyone. That's me by myself, I could do it all day. Yeah, I don't all do day. No, I do. So, yeah, go on, last one. I think this should I used be to say in, uh, um, when I was in Morocco, Al Jolos Bidun is Shay Adab. A gathering without yeah, tea is a punishment. And iced tea is another problem. I mean, I've been drinking some iced tea. Mm. Proper L- iced tea. L- Lipton no, 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 no. That doesn't qualify. That's primary school. No, Niger- I saw there's a Nigerian Lipton that's kind of alright though. There's like yeah. a Nigerian there's Lipton. One, the one Lipton, Lipton that's right. nice is green tea and mint. Mm. Or is lemon and one of them is what is with, with mint, very nice. But T4, not advertising, no sponsored, but T4 is a shop, they do bubble tea and stuff. But iced tea, I've mm. been addicted to a passion fruit iced tea of recent, with, yeah, with royalty, it's mad. 
this guy could do the whole podcast. It's Olong. Olong. T I is mad. It's mad. But now let's get into this last third one. The easiest one. Mm, I smell raspberry. Ooh. Is there raspberry in this? Yeah, yeah. I feel it kind of, it kind of off. Hibiscus. The thing is, I didn't read the ingredients. It might have a little, but there's one main ingredient, but then it's, yeah. The strawberry. No, yeah. It's hibiscus in that, sorrow. I can taste sorrow in that. Sorry, go to YouTube, I'm sorry. <laughs> Subscribe as well. Is there cinnamon in it? Probably. What do you normally, what fruit normally? Apple. Yeah, yeah, spiced apple. Yeah, that's definitely got spices in it. Yeah, <laughs> Does it tell all the ingredients in that thing? No, that's the thing, I'll get there. Check if there's hibiscus. Uh, there probably is, I don't even need to check. I'm sure it's there. Hibiscus gives me that. Uh, right, so, hibiscus ruined uh, when I was in Egypt. I drank hibiscus juice, ruined me. Is that, where, is that where my man in the shop? As in yeah, what yeah. kind of ruin? I'm just sick, like thrown out. My mum was sick for the time. Because of the water. Yeah, the water, yeah, the water. Ruined me, bro. You need, you need, you need me to make you sorrow. <laughs> sorrow and ginger. Yeah. Change your life. <laughs> it will reverse <laughs> everything that happened in Egypt. Eyes, I said, <laughs> Egypt will happen. Many black But with sorrow, there's really ways to have really it as well that I learned of recent. Mm. Because it can, it has an impact on your blood pressure. Mm. So when you, when you, when you have high blood pressure, you should have it cold. Mm. There's some science these days. man feels like I swear I meant to be the pharmacist one. Man just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what he said, what he said. Uh, uh, this one, let's, 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 let's park off that. Rock off. Yeah, I think you, you kept the title, I think you earned it. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, we're here to talk about uh, Aqeedah. We're here to talk about our beliefs and, and, um, and what it means to be Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Or as the Nigerians say, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're on this. We're like, okay, obviously nowadays there's a lot of deviant ideas. We were just here, obviously, this inshallah will come out after um, um, Eid, but you were just having a conversation about man talking about people uh, observing Eid on, on Sunday instead of yeah, Saturday. Yeah. And basically, in the world, there's a lot of there's a lot of madness. A lot of people following desires. Desires, exactly. Um, and what I want to kind of tease out from today is, um, is for people, it's a reminder for the people to, to kind of reflect and, and, and look at themselves and say, am I what I believe, which is Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamara, or am I encroaching on being in someone from someone who's uh, Ahlul Bidah, or even worse, am I somebody who's regularly practicing Kufr? No. So that's what I'm trying to tease out. So firstly, um, inshallah, just a brief definition or brief explanation on what it means to be Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamara. So Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ahl Sunnah, we say, for example, Ahl meaning like people of a Sunnah, mm. people of the Sunnah, and this means obviously that which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon and his companions. And the Jama'ah comes from being united upon that, um, because some people they say we need to call to unity and the likes, but then we ask, what do we unite upon? Mm. Because if you unite upon everything, then you stand for nothing. That's the reality. You can't just unite upon everything. Yeah. We're not taught to love everyone. Mm-hmm. We're, taught, we're taught to love that which Allah loves and hate that which Allah hates. hates. <coughs> These are obviously principles that are derived from the understanding of who is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So Ahl Sunnah in general are people of the Sunnah. There are many names that are also used to refer to them. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, Ahl al Hadith. Uh, Ahlul Athar, or uh, you might hear some say Al-Athari, Athari. a Salafi, Salafi. Salafiya, because mm. Salaf meaning the people of the Sunnah, and going mm. back to those earliest generations of Islam. Mm. And what you find, the sad things that we have today, people, they, they, they get upset when they hear these terms being used. They use the wrong, the but you can't blame yeah. them, mm. because sometimes they've had bad experiences with people who attribute themselves to Salafiya. Yeah. It's just like, for example, you know the statement people said, if I had met the Muslims before I looked into Islam, I would never have become mm-hmm. Muslim. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, you have people that say statements like this. But you have to understand, Islam is Islam. The Muslim, they're the ones who make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Islam is perfect. Religion Salafia is, is perfect, because mm-hmm. Salafia is Islam. Mm-hmm. It's being upon the Salaf. So, people don't like these terms. You have to name yourself these terms? No. But mm-hmm. when do we use these terms? When we need to differentiate between the people of falsehood and the people of the Haqq. So now it's known who are the people of the truth, who are the people of the Sunnah. 
they will be known by certain mm -hmm. qualities, beliefs, the actions that reflect that. So you also have, for example, they're called the Ta'ifatul Mansura, mm -hmm. the, the, the aided group, those who are aided by Allah SWT, being upon the truth. Or al firqatul Najia, the saved sect. Because of the Prophet's hadith of Satafteliku Umati ila Thalati Musabaida Firka, Kulla Finar illa Wahida, Kal Kila Manhum Yasullah Kal, Man Ala Mana Alehi Lyoma as Habi. And another narration says Al Jama'a. So the Prophet said he mentioned his hadith that my Ummah is going to divide into 73 70. divisions. All of them are in the hellfire but one. So he said, Who are they, your messenger? He said, Those who are upon what I and my companions are upon today. And in another version, says Al Jama'a. Mm. You see, so the Jama'ah is those who unite upon that which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon and his companions. So on that, yeah, so <clears throat> I think one question people have, and this is where some of the kind of cultural things will come in. So what about the people, yeah, because focusing on that word Jama'ah, the people who are surrounded by Bidah, the people whose the village is upon Bidah, what of them? Is it, is it, uh, is it blameworthy for the people like that to follow what the people around them, the, the mashayikh of their community are doing? If it's, if, it, if it's against the sunnah, 100%. Like knowingly though. Yes. There's a difference of you know, not knowing and not having access to knowledge. For example, one of the mashayikh, uh, who's well known, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, he narrates a story of when he was in the Prophet's Masjid and there was a man making dua so much he started to weep. So obviously the Sheikh was like kind of impacted from this seeing the situation. So he, he went closer to hear what he was saying. And he realized that he was making dua to the grave of the Prophet Muhammad. So he said after to the brother, I saw he was making dua and it was very it had an impact. Um, but do you know that dua is ibadah? And ibadah is only for Allah. Mm. And he mentioned the evidences regarding this. Then he said to the man, what do you have to say about what I've told you? And a man said, you've mentioned the Qur'an and the son of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, so how can you ask my opinion? Mm. And he said, what you've said to me today is the first time I've ever heard this in my life. But that's the sunnah. Like, now, it comes to you doing something wrong. The person giving that advice is to do it the best way. I have to show that I want good for you. This is where it goes, people hating. Mm. The people that attribute themselves to the Sunnah, a Salafia, because they're bad experience with others who attribute themselves that, to it. Because the Adab is horrible. Yeah, their manners is, they don't know to do with general people. Yeah. You see? And subhanAllah, my experience is like, I've had, I've had a, I had a dream with one of the Mashaykh that I know, and I asked him like, there's someone, he comes to Islam, they come to the Masjid, this is a dream, obviously, it's nothing derived from a dream, yeah, but yeah, yeah. for me it was better, it's reflective of reality. And I said, like, how do I deal with the situation when they listen to particular speakers and stuff? And he said, look at them like a bag. You can't just put content in the bag without replacing what's already in there. You have to take out the content and then, and then fill it, you see. But sometimes we understand that taking the content is warning people against everyone. Yeah. Whereas a general person doesn't really understand these issues. But if I give you principle, what happens? Mm. You start to apply it. So for example, everyone's learning Quran here, mm. they do Tajweed. You might have memorized five juz, no Tajweed. So, man. What happens? Mm. You naturally start to correct yourself because of the new knowledge you have of Tajweed. Mm. So if I give you principle, now you're gonna hear a statement from a member of speaker who's listening, like, hold on a minute that goes against the ways of the Sunnah. Now we have to say, yeah, I can't take that. To the point where we say, yeah, it's better that I listen to someone else. Mm. But if I just say, you're new, you don't understand, you want to be a shit knowledge, don't listen to this one, this one, this one, this one, he's like, mm. but then the other person told me, don't listen to you though. Which commonly happens, yeah. commonly happens. So yeah. next thing you know, they end up with no one. no one. I remember seeing one time my brother that I knew, he went down this road, warned against everyone on this principles of you know, you're not a punch, you're not general people. Next thing you know, I was seeing bare back photo, bare top photo, topless photos on Facebook of the brother. I'm like, Achi, what's going on? I just messaged him, like, Achi, what's going on? And he said, Achi, I went too deep into this thing and I've got no friends. Mm. All my friends are non Muslim. Mm. Because they, they say, kullu ilm in yuqal. not every knowledge is to be said, yeah. and he has a place. Mm. And so they have the statement of Ali bin Talib he said, Kalim and Nasbi Maya Ya Yani Ya Alifun. Uh to read and you can give Allah or Rasul and speak to the people that which they can comprehend. Do you want them to deny Allah and his messenger? Because there's been situations when I was in uni, 
talking about people that when you want to go politic, political mm-hmm. protests and the likes, I mentioned things about. I was talking, we were talking about Ispal. Ispal, and you're having your trousers below your ankles. And I mentioned, they said it's not from the religion, it's culture. This was their argument. Because it was in an Arab culture class. Mm-hmm. So they said, this is nothing to do with <laughs> Islam, yeah. this is culture. I said, but. There's this hadith, this hadith, this hadith. Mm. He said, no, they reject hadith. They're rejecting hadith based on what? Ignorance yes. and desires. Like, I don't want to swing, basically. Yeah. So, but, yeah. So, so I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking about like, my experience here. Yeah, and it's, it's actually mad though. Observing how things are nowadays, it's actually gotten to a point, like you said, where people are almost afraid to use hadith and yeah. quote, quote hadith, quote Quran to justify advice because you could say certain man people don't, probably, want, to relate people to don't it. want to relate to it and it's, uh, it's, one of those, it's actually a madness and, and I think that's probably why we're in a state and we're going to get onto, uh, onto this a bit later where people are openly practicing bid'ah people are openly made, it's actually essentially creating their own religion, creating their own rules and feeling that it's okay because not that it's it's a it's a it's an act of worship but it's a reaction to others if you and look at it like this yeah tomorrow is what mm. uh yom al-arafah, yom al-arafah. Sure. what was revealed on this day from the time of the prophet muhammad sallam allah has said today i have completed, mm. completed mm. my favor upon you and you have completed your religion, I've completed my favor upon you, and I'm happy as, I'm pleased with Islam as your religion. So Imam Malik says, Whatever was not from the religion that day will not be from the religion today. So we know the way Allah has, has legislated Islam that it, can, it is uh, applicable to every time and place. Mm-hmm. For those you know, you see, but those who don't have knowledge and give precedence to their own fault, they are the ones who fall into these traps. And they start talking from aspects of social media influences. They've adopted the ways of social media influences. As soon as I hear someone say, I think, I'm like, okay, let's stop. Mm. It's not about I think, you see. That's addition. Because when we say Alan, what is knowledge? It's knowing the truth with his evidence. It's not about what do I think. You see? And sometimes when we open that door of what do you think, we are setting someone up for their own failure. You see? And this is where it's, 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 a, it's a difficult topic because a person has to ask himself as a Muslim, what kind of Muslim do you want to be? Do you just want to be the average Joe that prays and fasts and does nothing else? And if I have to give a cat, I give a cat. Or do you want to be one that has knowledge and treads the path of seeking knowledge? And also, as someone who seeks knowledge, you have to know the difference of the, pe- the types of people you're also talking to and having these discussions with. Because when you learn, you, seek knowledge, you learn from the things that is important to know the circumstance of the one you're teaching. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to talk in a way that's befitting to them. And talk was relevant to them. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. for example, a person, they might, their whole family might be grave worshippers, but they happen to come to your masjid. Mm. You see? And now they're, like, they're learning books of Aqidah. So they're learning the errors of that the this is not correct. Yeah. So what, what happens, they can either do two things. They can either ask your advice about their situation and you advise them in a way that's befitting and appropriate for that person. Or they just take what you've given them and cause mayhem mm. at home by not knowing how to deliver, deal with it. Yeah. I think that was probably going to be my next question for those people that um, may not necess- may, may have the knowledge but don't necessarily have the wisdom to deliver it in yeah. the correct way to people. I guess, what would you, what, what, what would you advise? So that comes with experience. Mm and following your teacher. Like we learned this from the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari when uh, he was a student of who? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. 
And when he went to the masjid, he saw the people doing what? Making dhikr in jama'at, and in, in circles, together, in groups. Now, he had enough knowledge to refute this, but he didn't proceed who? His mm, teacher. teacher. And that's the problem sometimes. Like, everyone now, because of the internet, like, yeah, everyone's a, a sheikh. Like, yeah. Everyone's got a voice. And I remember a brother said to me a nice principle. I live by it now. He said, the empty barrel makes the most noise. Mm-hmm. And that is so key. You find there's people of knowledge, mountains of knowledge. They don't talk how don't talk everyone in the really. West is talking. Yeah. They don't behave how they behave. And they're, they're happy to say, I don't know. Or and no they country, take their yeah. time. And the thing is, you they may be giving advice, but just because it's not how you do it doesn't mean they're not doing it. Mm-hmm. You see? Because it's not on YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, moving on a bit. So I wanted to kind of get into this is the practical bit, and it's, it's essentially kind of uh, explaining the difference between not exp- explaining the difference between bid'ah and kufr in using practical examples that are relevant to today. First thing is it's the most important thing: is salah. The state of the Muslims today is that you know, alhamdulillah, there's a lot. A lot of people are praying, but you'll see anyone that works in a standard kind of workplace around Muslims that when it comes to salah, that like, you could have 30 Muslims, chances are probably 10 of them are praying. Yeah, maybe another 10 are praying, but they wait until they go home and things yeah, like this and, and, and five prayers in a row, stuff like that. Stuff. Now, what, what is the obviously that yeah, we know you're not, a, it's not, it's not a we're not giving hukum here, we're not giving rulers upon you. Yeah, no, we talk about the ruling of action, not on the person, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So and that the, the, even the the root the two discussion of hukum talak as salah, mm. the one who leaves the salah is is detailed. It's detailed, yeah. And of the thing that's understood or from what I've understood from the ulama, is regarding the one who leaves of the salah in totality. Mm. Okay. Um, then this person they may deem him to be a disbeliever, mm-hmm. or a person who doesn't believe the salah is an obligation. This, this way it comes into kufr as well. Can I jump on that point? No, I was just going to say, is so you said that the person that believes the salah is an obligation. Now, is that in belief or in action? Because someone may believe that salah is an obligation, but they don't act as if it is. No, but they, so if they believe it's obligation, but they don't act, that's not yeah. them not believing it's an obligation. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's them that's being that's sinful. No. In not upholding no. what they know is to be an obligation. Mm. You see, but if a person says, no, "I don't have to pray," because this is this is where it it's not. An ob- it's, I love yeah. it. It's not. It's not. It's not an obligation. Yeah. Problem. I don't believe it's an obligation. I don't believe mm-hmm. it's wajib to pray. Then this is an issue of kufr. And this is this is what because for me, if I because you, you might question this person, yeah, and this person might say, oh, "Okay, uh, you're yeah, not gonna pray." Okay. Oh, um, oh, you, the whole time you come in, bro. Nah, I pray at home. Bro, you, you can't pray at home. Yeah. Like, it's the time, you know, obviously, so long, they have their, deen, their, their due times. Nah, bro, but nah, it's pray You at have home, some who say. And, 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 and what I'm basically saying, because that person might not say, I don't believe I have to pray at home, but your actions yeah. are screaming to me. Yes. You believe. Now, some people will say, if you intentionally delay the salah out of his time, some will say that this is disbelief. Because mm. they'll never but, say it. Yeah. They'll never so say these it. things will get taken to, obviously, a judge. Mm. Islamic in an Islamic uh, judicial system and they obviously have to make tawbah and all these kind of things but to, some say to delay the salah out of his time intentionally then this is act of kufr mm. you see so this is the thing is it's like if the person said the first thing we're going to be asked about Yom Al-Qiyam is the salah uh, a person should be fearful it's God that's the thing you should guard if you know yeah. that he said the thing, the covenant between us and the kuffar the disbelievers is the salah so whoever leaves it is a disbeliever what are you taking the risk for? Mm. because that shows that you have a sickness that's, that's all, bro. of the heart because if you truly love Allah Azza wa Jal, you will obey him now this is the other foolish statement they come out with mm. Uh, you can't judge me. Allah knows what's in my heart. Yeah, He does. A hundred percent. Yes, yes. He knows the sickness and in so your heart. And so do I. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what's yeah, in your yeah, heart. Yeah. 
Sickness. Joe Blogs knows yeah, sickness, bro. Yeah. And someone said, well, how do you know that? Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudra idha saluhat saluh al jasadu kullu. Wa idha fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu. Allah wa hiya al qalb. Is it not? But in our body, there, there's a muscle of flesh. If it is upright, the whole body is upright. If it's corrupted, the whole body is okay. corrupted. Is it not? But the heart. Every, and if a person embraces Islam, the first action is the action of the heart. The heart is what submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this is followed by what? Proclaiming it on your tongue. Now, if your tongue is not proclaiming what's in your heart, then this becomes into hypocrisy. <laughs> now, your tongue proclaims what is in your heart and it's manifests in your actions. actions. And that's why Iman is all of that. Statements, any belief, statements, statements and, and actions. actions. So this is when we try to encourage a person to understand these principles so they don't make it up for themselves. And what you'll find, these people, the issue is they lack belief in Allah mm. and the last day. These are the two most important of the pillars of Iman. Uh, so Allah mentions, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ فَإِنَ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَا الْمَعْوَىٰ Whoever fears standing before Allah and prohibits himself from his own desires, then Jannah will be his dwelling place. So you look at a person, how many times the Prophet said, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then do such and such. Because that is what makes you act upon Islam. You believe in Allah, you love Allah, which means you love the actions, the people Allah loves, the places and the times. Times of Salah, the place of Salah, the Masjid, the people who pray, mm. the Muslims, and the act of Salah itself. You have to love these things for who? Allah SWT. Mm. Why do you uphold it? Because this is your Jannah and your Nar. You have to uphold it to enter Jannah. But this is why I'm doing it. I'm doing it so I can go to Jannah. But when you find a person has a sickness of giving precedence to the worldly life, as Allah mentioned, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا You rather, you prefer the worldly life, وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى They forget this part, you see? So, it's like, why am I going to deny, de delay the rights of the one who created me? The one who sustains me? And that shows they don't have knowledge of Allah SWT. Because if I'm going to give precedence to my work, my job, before okay. the salah, mm -hmm my akhirah, then this is the problem. Mm. Then you don't truly know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't know Allah is the one who created you, and He's the one who has nurtured you, and He sustains you, grants you good health to be able to do the work you do, has given you the skills you have, that you're able to earn the amount of money you earn. So, if you deny Allah's rights, where is the gratitude? Then perhaps Allah will take it from you. Allah will take that bounty from you. And then what happens? If a person is sick to that extent, they go into depression. They don't go back to the Quran. They don't go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now they go back to mm. drugs Thanks. and alcohol. Yeah. But sometimes they are the cause of this themselves. This is how they get pushed away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they did not uphold the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm. I think it's probably, I think it was Khalid that said, you know, that you often find in people when they have, you know, these illnesses and obviously well, this is not medical science, science we're giving them, we're not trying to, but when people often have these issues, depression and things like that, often as you find that somewhere they left one element of their, of their, their being. It's spiritual their illness, spiritual. Akhi. And the cure is spiritual, i.e. it's your Iman, mm. it's your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, like, the amount of things that I've gone through, it's Islam and my knowledge of Islam okay. and my knowledge of yeah. the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal is what makes me understand. And you like see I, I lost my brother 10 years ago. Mm. He was younger than me. Like it's 10 mm. years now. Mm. But as soon as I saw him, I knew he's gone back to Allah. Like that's it. As soon as I saw the situation, died in his sleep. And I just knew. And at that moment, I was like, I have so much certainty. Mm. Because some of us are waiting like death has an age, a specific age. Mm. But it's like, come on, as Muslims, Allah has said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaku Allah haqqa tuqati, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Oh, you believe, fear Allah in the best way. And do not die except you die upon Islam. Now, no one knows when that meeting with the angel of death is going to happen, but it's going to happen, you see. But if you ask a person about a job, 
They got a job interview. What do they do? They buy nice shoes or they polish old ones. Mm. They get a, a suit if they can afford it. Okay, okay. Or they get early payment from Universal Credit to get that suit to be able to get that job. Why? Preparing to make changes for their life. They think it's going to better them. But now we have an appointment, an interview that's going to happen. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. But we don't prepare for it. Like the biggest interviews in your grave, mm. free questions. You see? And that's why the Prophet mentioned about when those, the monkey and the kid come, the, the trial of the, of the grave is just as bad as the trial of the jam. So, in this situation now, some of us, we, we know the answer now. Someone says, Who's your Lord? Allah, mm. easy, we don't even think. Autopilot, what's your religion? Islam. Your yeah. Who's your Prophet Muhammad? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to that moment in time when you're being asked in the grave, they say, Ha ha, mm. oh, mm. they will say, Ha, yani, I heard people saying something, so I said it, or they can say, I don't know. And they mention when he says, Ha, it's because now he can remember he did know, but he's not able to say it now. So imagine you can't answer that question. Simple questions, but because of the level of Iman you died upon, or the lack of it, you're not able to answer these questions. Mm. Um, before we break for Salah, I'll just say on, on this <laughs> break for Salah. No, we have to do it. We have to do it. the Salah over. Um, and bro, people, like practically, people in this situation where they're struggling to make their Salah on time for whatever reason, or maybe they, they lack that belief. I think for those people, they've been, they've been addressed already. What are the practical steps for those people and for those who are around those people to advise them? Teach people about Allah. Mm -hmm. Because they say, Man kana billahi a'raf kana minhu akhwaf. And whoever knows Allah the most will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. You see? And that's why Allah says, Inna ma yakshallah min ibadihi al ulama. And those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most are the people of knowledge. And so, khashya, this type of fear, is fear of Allah is based upon knowledge. You see? If I don't fear punishment of Allah, if I don't fear that Allah will punish one for our sins, why would I stop sinning? Mm. The only thing that makes a Muslim not do something is because they fear the consequence and they're aware of it. If you don't know and don't make yourself aware, you're not going to fear it. Mm. You're going to take it, it's, it's, not, it's not that deep. Mm. I think most of you find most of the, most of the Arvada, especially the Arvada of the heart, you yeah. find that it's, without knowledge, it's, it's, it's not possible to do. And Actually, you're cheating if you yourself. truly know yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never rely upon other, anyone else. Mm -hmm. So you will never give precedence to a job before the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, I've, you've heard stories of people that they didn't, I don't know, one brother came to one time and said, look man, subhanAllah, I, I overspent in sadaqah in Ramadan. Like, I didn't really, like, he will manage his wealth, he didn't manage his wealth. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I was like, yeah, but then he's like, subhanAllah, I forgot to pay rent. And he doesn't have no money. And obviously, at that time of COVID, they were giving out any, if you were self-employed, they gave you like a bonus, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a payout, a grant yeah, I scheme. Forgot, yeah, that, I forgot what it was called. But yeah. He found out about that at that moment in time. Three days later, he had a couple grand. And he's like, SubhanAllah, look at this. See Allah. Like, this is the means that Allah facilitates for you. You see, like if a person just always remembered, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Most people just stop at يَخْرَ مَخْرَجَ mm -hmm. and forget when he says, and he'll make for him uh, a, a way out mm -hmm. that he couldn't see. imagine. Mm -hmm. he couldn't, you will never comprehend, you see. But if a person truly believes, I mean one sheikh he told us, Sometimes the criminal has more tawakkal <laughs> yeah, upon Allah yeah. Taala than a Muslim. A bank robber will say, God's got me. <laughs> and he really believes, I'm not going to get caught because God's got my back. That's what he'll say. And he truly believes it. Yeah. And they mention sometimes Allah will Allah act upon that yeah. foolish person because of their belief. Yeah. And Allah says, I am as you think of me. Mm. So imagine the Muslim now thinking, yeah, yeah, Allah's not going to aid me. Allah's mm. not going to answer my dua. What do you mean? Allah said, call upon me. Mm. So, yeah, so, so, so. You see, I will answer you. So how am I going to say, no, I can't call upon Allah? 
Shaitan made dua to Allah. Hmm. Big one, you know, big one, big one. It's, it's, and it's, you'll find, especially it's people that are doing all right, yeah. smart, uh, good jobs. Don't, don't make dua. They have a good job, been nafs, they yeah. become self amazed. They follow the ways of Qarun. Hmm. You know, when he found all this wealth. Yeah. And amazing. And then what happened? When the people came to ask him from what Allah had given him, he said, What? Well, yeah. You think it's from Allah? Mm. This is from my knowledge. You go ask Allah. If you think this is from Allah, go and ask Allah, don't ask me. Mm. This is the arrogance. So what happened? Woke up nothing. nothing. Woke up with nothing. You see, and that is the definition of tawakkul wa zuhud. Mm. You can have all the money in your bank account, but you know this is nothing compared to what Allah has. Mm. And this is from Allah, awalan, firstly. So Allah can remove it from me just like that, if I'm not grateful. So, and all of these things go back to, most importantly, the actions of the heart. Oh. Because the heart is the vessel that pumps the goodness to the rest mm. of the body. So if there is a sickness there, it's like a virus. Mm. Things are not going to function properly. You see? And that's what's going to be seen in your actions. You but if the heart is never, sound, never, never not come out. Mm. That's why what did Allah say? يوم لا ينفع مال ولا البنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. The sound heart. Mm. And there's going to be a day which يوم القيامة, no wealth, no offspring are going to be of benefit to anyone except for mm. those who came to Allah with a sound heart. Their wealth was beneficial to them from the actions. Their children, they raised them righteously. They made dua mm. for them. They'll be of benefit to them. Mm. But as for the one whose heart is corrupted. Upon shirk and hypocrisy, it's not going to benefit you. Mm. No matter how much righteousness your child was upon, if you was upon shirk, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't benefit you. No benefit. You see, so yeah, you, the actions of the heart, and there's a lot of works by the ulama on this. Like one sheikh has got a book, and the Amal al Qulub, the two volumes, is a very nice book, but it's neglected. Mm. Very neglected. People focus on one thing, but they the heart is where it starts. When the heart becomes f truly submissive to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the body will just follow People suit. Gain knowledge that looks good. Yeah. 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 Let's let's pray for Salah, inshallah. No, um, inshallah. We'll, wrap, we'll do one last bit and then we'll wrap up, inshallah. You, yeah. You fasted today, yeah? No, I didn't fast. Oh. Fasted. Oh yeah. He's, I came from ball. Football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's why my head's banging. Too many goals, man. Is it recording? It's recording, bro. So don't be here. Say what you want. Allahumma I found the kind of smart people are back. Um, just before we go back in, so I just wanted to uh, again thank Medina College for allowing us to record here. Um, yeah, that's our setting for today. Um, yeah, yeah, people thinking, what's going on? Where's Pekka Moscow? <laughs> we'll be back in the Nam soon, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> But yeah, um, just going back into it, I think uh, we obviously we've covered Salah. Um, I think one of the other kind of main issues that I think that I think I would say probably plague a lot of people, especially in the West, is I'd say music. Um, I think with, uh, with it's almost unavoidable at this point. I mean, you're outside, you turn on the TV, there's music blaring. So I mean, when you used to not sound with you, yeah, literally, literally, yeah. So yeah, the last think, time she's been there for a minute. <laughs> I think they have to start making dua that they just lose their voice well. <laughs> literally a lot of locusts to eat their voice boxes <laughs> yeah um, so I guess for the youth or anybody in general that's kind of struggling with this I would say affliction of music I guess what, what would kind of your main advice be I mean I know I've heard a lot of um, actually you're saying that I think one main thing that um, I've heard that has helped is people that that when it said that the the Quran and music can't Don't mix exist in the same in heart. The same yeah. So yeah, I guess from there, what would kind of be your advice to those kind of people? Ibn Qayyim. Again, it goes back to the heart. You see, because it's like you have to condition your heart to love that which Allah loves. So. It's like, I mean, when I first became Muslim, like 17 years ago, I was listening to music. Mm. Like, I didn't have uh, it's like a, a motive to not listen to it. Mm. It's like, yeah, you could say you're going to fear Allah, but it's like, what does that mean without knowledge, though? This goes back to what we said before. Yeah, like, literally, you have to kind of just know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just know your... 
a lot of the young people lack purpose. And that's the biggest struggle. Because sometimes we look at music as a main issue, but it's not, it's a reflection of another issue. Mm. This is just how it comes out. So that's why some people say don't over talk about music. Uh, or you hear even musicians say that's not the main issue though, but yeah, it isn't the main issue. But it's the it's fruits a of a main it's issue. A sight, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And also, it does play its part. Because for example, the young people, in, and let's not act like the young people listen to Beethoven and Mozart, they're not doing mm. that. They're listening to man saying, they're gonna stab, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do abuse woman, they're gonna rob this, they're gonna do that. Nothing good is coming out of it. Mm. So what happens when you hear something or see something often, you normalize it. It's like, if I got myself in a situation, I might start saying lyrics that I've heard. I'll chef you up or whatever it is that they're saying. And you don't know what it's gonna... Do you even, even not, not to bring us back, but I think, because obviously we have we had this conversation, I think it doesn't even need... It's, it's so obvious the reasons and the, and the, and the negative Im implications of listening to music. Yeah. Just listen to it, like, it'll hear what they're saying. Uh, do, do you know what I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, I, uh, I, I think the negative implications are clear, but I think a lot of the time, I don't think it's mentioned enough why music is actually haram in and of itself. So I think because a lot of people don't necessarily know the exact reason, like for example, we know that shirk is haram because you, know, you can't associate partners with Allah, we know why Zen is haram and things like that, but people maybe maybe don't actually know the reason why music in itself is haram. Yeah, yeah, so so of the main things that, that they yeah. mention, obviously it turns you away from the remembrance of Allah mm -hmm. time. Like, what you'll find, a person listens to music, they'll hear Quran, they won't listen to Quran. Mm. They'll turn that off, they'll skip that. That's what will happen. They'll give preference to music. Boy, music, it's, 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 yeah. they say it has such an impact on your, your body, you start moving without even wanting to move. Mm. You see, it's attractive. No one's going to say music is rubbish. It is attractive. All of the things of sin are attractive. Mm. You see. Also, there's some things that we don't even know why it's made impermissible. But because we know Allah has made it impermissible, we, it goes back to it. If your heart is sound, you're going to accept it. The issue that we have now is, for example, not everyone might speak against it openly or try to change that evil openly, but the issue is not hating it in the heart. Mm. That is a reflection of how dead our heart has become towards submission to Allah SWT. So, even, for example, I've seen podcasts where you got a brother, he's a musician, or the likes, but he's Muslim. And they'll ask him to recite Quran. And when you hear him recite Quran, you're like, why did the brother ask him to do that? Literally, I feel like I don't blame the brother being asked, I blame the questioner. Why are you putting him in that situation? Mm. And you're going to say, mashallah, for what? He embarrassed himself. Mm. Because a person might be very good at poetic lyrics and the likes, metaphor, metaphors, all these kind of language skills. But when it comes to you reciting the book of Allah, that is your source of guidance, you can clearly see that you have not given it any attention at all. Like you can't tell me you're the best musician in London, but then when it comes to the Quran, when we're told to recite with your best voice, it's like I'll ask you to stop reciting Quran. Because mm. mm. you're butchering it. It's one of them. I even I feel like if you look at think of think of the think of Sufis. What do they do to get them in that yeah, man. in that state? It's it's, it's basically what like what music dance is like, like a madman. Music. Yeah. Close just, your eyes, spin around. You got man doing the worm like this to go kiss the <laughs> sheikh's foot. Man break dancing to go kiss man's foot. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> no way, I hate. Yeah. I hate feet. So imagine man had me. me I'm, alhamdulillah, I'm not Sufi boy, mm -hmm. because that would have been oppression, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and look, look, looking look, at that foot, like yeah. <laughs> But that's the lips that's the that, bro. <laughs> but for the fam, look, look, what, look, what, look at the, the what, what they use music to take them into a state, a where realm they, where they lose where, what they believe, what they will say is a state where they're 
enlightened, but they're literally they've lost control of themselves. They've essentially left Spinning their faculties. Circles, their bro. faculties are yeah. gone. Yeah. And that's what music does, bro. So what 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 person wants to be out of control of their faculties? Because these same people that will do this will say, no, I'm not gonna get. I won't. I won't drink. I won't drink alcohol. I won't smoke weed because of what? It, why not? Bro? Obviously, it's haram, man. You know, look what it does to you. Music's doing the same thing to you, bro. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like bro. It turns away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa taala. And the slow jam can have the best lyrics. It's still gonna make you feel cover woman. A hundred percent. Like no way. You can listen to a slow jam. The kind, the sounds that it comes with, it, uh, it affects your heart straight away. Mm. I'm at like Spanla before when I wasn't practicing at all, and I was trying to be some gangster before I knew anything. Imagine I'm trying to be a gangster by listening to slow jams. <laughs> it doesn't work because mm. my heart's meant to be hard, but this is softening it. Mm. But it has an immediate impact. People, you might hear yeah. something start crying. Why are you crying for? Okay. You wasn't sad. You're taking yeah. some lots of sadness. Like you know, and the thing is, it wasn't the lyric; it was just the sound. The that's, sound made me start bawling. That's dangerous, bro. Like for what? Yeah. But if I read Quran and I'm pondering over the message, just the Quran in of itself being the words of Allah, you're gonna find peace in your heart. Mm-hmm. So you might cry because why? Your soul is getting fed. So your soul has been starving; it's been thirsty for long. So now, it's receiving that medicine. You start to weep because you're reconnecting with your maker. You see, mm. music ain't doing that for you mm. at all. It's just short. It's that short. Come on, it's that, man. It's that crack or whatever type of. Yeah, it's like. like yeah. And even look at look at the look at the the. Obviously, this this might not be everybody, but a large majority of the people, you know, their 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 favorite artists, puts a song out, and they'll rush to it. Yeah, that's 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 the, the, the way these people, from, they're like, I'm, pro- I'm, these, they treat these people like prophets. Mm. They'll I'm, call them prophets. Yeah, literally, they'll call them. I'm a mixed the cultural truth. background. The yeah. truth. Obviously, I did my my heritage recently, yeah. so I kind of know. Alhamdulillah, thirty four percent Nigerian. Don't know. <laughs> that's the most, well, the majority. Twelve percent Sierra Leone. The exception. Yes, fifty percent African. Our farm. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's like growing up, I was Rastafarian before I became Muslim. Mm. And yeah, so man. that's reggae and raga. Yeah, man. Mm. Reggae is meant to be good vibes. Yeah. Raga is just mashed down woman, like yeah. literally disgraced woman. Mm. And, then, and sometimes, so I'll be on the bus when I've practiced, I'm practicing Islam now, and you're hearing the old song. And girls are singing on the bus loud. I'm like, sure, do you know what? Do you, know, do you actually so understand yeah. what you're repeating? Yeah. Like man's talking about abusing you in every shape and fashion and you're dancing, singing it like it's a good song. Mm. But if you actually listen to the lyrics of what is being said, take away everything, the sound behind it, they're parrots. Mm. They've literally become parrots. They're just repeating with no comprehension. And it's like, don't you have any shame? But they don't. You're just mad. Going back to it, yeah. Look at, there's another example of how it just makes you lose your mind. These same women that you're talking about on the bus, yeah, are the same ones that someone says, no, the, some, I don't know, these will be the biggest feminists, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's their, that's their creed, feminism. They're, they're on that, hard. Someone will sing a song that basically goes against their whole man hatch, everything about them. Everything. And they're dancing along like idiots. Yeah. Mm. I had a fight on a bus not long ago because of music, man. Bus These kids, Aki. At the back. You know, here, Bluetooth speaker, mm-hmm. bruv. I was like, nah, 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 nah. Mm-hmm. I couldn't hold back. I was like, turn that off, bruv. They're like, it's on the lowest volume. I said, listen, the lowest volume is high enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't ask for a DJ. Like, I'm on the bus. It's a public space. You need to ask everyone's permission before you do that. This is not your bus, bruv. Mm-hmm. And and what makes someone have to... Yeah, they've got Larry, actually, like little kids, bruv. I try to start cussing. They see me in my phobe, they think... Obviously, they think man ain't got no sauce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they think we got no sauce. I'm about to be shy for me. Yeah, yeah, bruv. Yeah. Like, they thought they could start gunning me and, and, and I was just going to be in my phobe, my skin guy. And, uh, I give it back, mm-hmm. bruv. Give it back. There's lesson learned. Lesson learned. But it's like, all of that evil started from what? Music. Like, why are you forcing people to listen to what you listen, get headphones. That's what they're there for. Mm. 
Like if you want to be in your own bubble, don't make it a nuisance for other people. You see, and it's like it's validation, isn't it? Yeah, actually, man. And what these young people are listening to, it's like, come on, man. Yeah. So anyway, go, so obviously, where we're all under the agreement, you know, obviously there's people that will say that there's a difference of opinion, etc. But they follow their desires. Yeah, 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 Everyone exactly. who follows desires got difference of well, opinion. Exactly. Hundred. Everyone who follows his eyes Hundred. has got a difference of opinion. I might keep that, that bar in mind. Obviously, yeah. look at what happened to Kalbani. Actually, Allah mm. honored him to be an imam in Mecca. Mm. Mom talked to him, music's halal and stuff. Actually, gone. Music's not haram. Allah, Allah remove you from that makana. Mm. You don't deserve that place now. Mm. The one, Salim Mughamasi. He was Kobe. imam Masjid Quba, mm. the first masjid built in Medina. Same thing, now he's removed, Akhi. Come on, man. That one caught me deep, you know. Me and Az, as an Al Kabani, was uh, that's my, that's what I use for my hips, or what I use for my hips. That one caught me deep, you know, when I heard about that. Yeah, Akhi, I was, Akhi, I'm not, I was, mm. it's like, it's a wound, but then it teaches you a principle. You love for the sake of Allah, and you hate for the sake of Allah. Mm. That includes actions and people, places and times. And the problem is that we have these days, we don't know how to condition that. Mm. So we love everything unconditionally. So it's like, let's say for example, you love someone so much, when they're making mistakes that are detrimental in front of your face, you refuse to accept it. This is why people fall into bid'ah. Mm. These are of the reasons, main reasons people fall into bid'ah is in al-ghulu fi hubb al-ashkhas. And you have extremeness in love of people. And also taqdis al-ashkhas, honoring people beyond that which is befitting. Like, it's not based on how much followers you have, how nice your thobe looks, and all these things. This is irrelevant. Because if you come down to principle, whoever does an action of evil and cause to it, he is blameworthy for everyone who follows. So your abundant followers is worse for you than me having a few followers but trying to teach the truth. It's not about who's in front of me. If one person benefits from the truth, that's, I'm only asking Allah that that is heavy on my scale for me, that I get to see that Yom al Qiyamah, because you don't know. But this is the problem now, that I feel like the ulama knew the dangers of the internet when it first came out, and we've only realized now, when we're neck deep in it. It's too unfiltered. Man. You see what I'm saying? Too unfiltered. Actually, look, every social media is the same. You go like that. Or you do that if your thumb's good. Mm. And you just go. And every time you move your finger, it's new information. It's not the same topic. Mm. And it's like, it's not filtered. I feel like when you say you're Muslim, when they ask these questions, they will show you that which will distract you from Islam. Mm. I think they do as well. Yeah. Like they'll, do you know what's mad? Like, look at the biggest example, for example. On our Joe Fox Rima page, for example, yeah. This is the maddest thing. Yeah. You know, for that, all we do is follow Dari or, or Muslim institutions. Um, and our followers, obviously, Muslim people. And all we obviously will interact with is what our followers and what we follow. But still, go on the explore page. What do you see? Yeah, it's a mad nonsense. Exactly. nonsense. And it, and it's and it's Muslim nonsense. Yeah. But it's not. It's still the same nonsense. Just maybe wearing half a hijab on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, mm. I it's yeah. Especially in yeah, TikTok, stay off that man. It's poison, bro. Um, let's, and let's, TikTok, yeah, like he, TikTok, <laughs> he, time just gone. Like it goes so, so fast, like he. Yeah. Um, let me set the camera grid. Okay. And shut up. What did I do? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inshallah, let's let's uh, let's 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 bring it back, inshallah, and and, and before we wrap, um, in like summarizing, so Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaa, somebody, something which we should all strive to be upon. Um, how, for those people who've been suffering with these afflictions, the music, the uh, uh, not adhering to the, to the summer uh, in a proper way on time in its rightful time, and somebody who may have the beliefs that these things are okay or the beliefs that they are okay to be 
in the situation they're in, what, 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 what are the practical steps they should take, first and foremost, and yeah, yeah. So, like me, personally, I would say the most important thing is... I know what you're going to say anyway. You're, yeah, you're learning about Allah. Mm-hmm. And the best way to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ways that will increase your mind is knowing Allah by His names and His attributes. You see, because there's a story of one sheikh, one sheikh and he writes a story and he's, and he's explaining in the book of Imam Qayyim al-Dawah, the disease and its cure. And he mentioned there was a sheikh who had students, but the sheikh had an addiction to smoking. Mm-hmm. And he would ask his wife to prepare the cigarette and or the, the roll up for him. Um, so one day, the students visited the wife because she was senior, so they called her like our mm-hmm. auntie, like they had respect. And he said, obviously, when you go, when the chef comes home, what does he ask you to do? And he said, he, 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 he asked about to make the, the smoking for him, the sheesh, or whatever it was, the pipe for him, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he, when he does it, he says, istighfar. And he said, yeah, Allah ghafur rahim. Mm. So the students, they said, the next time he does that, when he says Allah is the most merciful, shout, wa huwa shadeed al oh, Like shout out that he's also the most severe in punishment. Yeah. And the Shaykh said, when he heard that, he, he threw everything, literally. Because sometimes what we find when we don't know Allah as we should, we fall into the ways of the people of innovation from the earlier times when they went either too much into over hope where they forgot about mm. um, yeah. fear yeah. and those who went into extreme levels of fear that they had no hope the Muslim is in the middle you have fear and you have hope and when you have fear of Allah what does that make you do? repent yeah. you see when you have hope you hope Allah is going to be forgiven, so merciful to you, be merciful to you. But if you only had fear, either you will drive yourself crazy and seclude yourself from the whole of society, or when you fall into a particular sin, you say, I've gone too far to repent. And you give up. Or when you have too much hope, you will never repent. You start a version of the territory where you start denying some of Allah's. You see, you see what I'm saying? So, mm. like, it's important. Let's have a relationship with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know what it is? Young people are going through challenges now that they don't understand. And if there's no guidance for them, they don't understand how to function with them also. But if you look at Sota Yusuf, is one of the best examples because it's a complete story of trial oh. and tribulation from a young age mm. and it continued. But then, the methodology of Yusuf was always the same. Mm. He always turned back to mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He always exercised patience. Mm. And also Ya'qub salam, same thing. Mm. They went through trial upon trial. So sometimes when you're going through things, you, you, sometimes you can think, am I the only one who's going through this? Mm. Or why me? But if a person truly understands, it's like, subhanAllah, you might be tested with something that you don't know. Is Allah just making it so easy for you that this hardship you're going through, if you do with it the right way, okay. Allah's going to save you from all hardship mm. of Yom Al Qiyamah. Mm. But most times people don't have understanding. They don't understand how Allah is. Patience. You see what I'm saying? How He tests us. Because no one can come and say, I've been tested more than the prophets and the messengers. Mm. Allah has given you their stories. Mm. Why? So you can reflect. Because now it's like. If you're going through a hardship, if someone tells you of a hardship worse than yours at that moment in time, you'll feel at ease. Mm. You'll be like, SubhanAllah, what I'm going through is actually not that bad. bad. Perspective. Perspective, But in the West now, you don't have it enough. Alhamdulillah, before I was Muslim, I traveled a lot, especially to Africa, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Gambia, Ethiopia, I traveled a lot. Mm. And... You see poverty. Perspective, yeah, it gives you yeah. perspective. And one thing that I remember, like, for example, my dad, when we were in Zimbabwe, we used to go wimpy. And always well, around know. those areas, you'll see, like, some young people that don't have nothing. But I'll see, make them come and eat, like, get them food as well. And you learn not to turn people away. Like, if you can help, you help. No. But just when you see it, if you're that way inclined, when you see it, you're going to want to help instantly because you start to realize 
okay, I might not have as much money as I want to have, but my situation is better than this person's. Yeah. And that's the reality, like... If I feel bad now, imagine how I feel. Yeah, because mm. you have to think about it. All the money you have is a loan. Mm. Allah gave you this money to see what you do with it. And when you die, he's going to give it to those who come after you, from your children. Mm. So it's gone, it's no longer yours. So, and someone said to me, I think yesterday or the day before, that people, the trap people fall into, they start working, they follow social structure, I need to get a mortgage, I need to have a house. So I no, pay a 10% to to that, deposit yeah. mm. and I tie myself for 35 years. The next 30 to 35 years, I have to spend two to three bags a month to pay off my mortgage. By the time I've done it and I can retire, I'm 60 plus years old. As soon as I sit down on my couch, dead. So I worked to die. Trap. Like, what, what for? And sometimes they don't even want to do it. They just feel like this is the right it's thing the, to do because the, yeah. the society is telling me to do this. It's a trodden path. Yeah. yeah. You know, that the, it's like when you speak about these things, so much things can come to your mind mm. that we learn from Islam that teach you how to function in this life. Especially when the Prophet said, Kun fi dunya gharib mm. aw sabil. Be in this life as if you're a stranger or a traveler. Mm. What's the benefits of that? A stranger is not trying to be known. They're not trying to be known by everyone. They're not they're getting trying, comfortable. They're to put roots down in yeah, the, the traveler is not settling. Mm. They know. See, this life is a means to it's get really to what comes next. It's so rude. And that's why the main, for me, the main thing is lack of knowledge of Allah and forgetting about the hereafter. That's why Allah says, "Wala taqoonu kaladina nasulaha, faansahum anfusahum." Then you don't be like those who forgot about Allah, so we made them forget about themselves. How can you forget about yourself? Mm. You forget that you are going to stand before Allah and be held accountable. And if you forget that, then that is the worst loss ever. Finished. That's the worst loss ever. Because if you ask people now, what's your purpose of life? Someone tells you, ah, to work and provide for my children. That is temporary. Yeah. Uh Barakallah, you've come then. Like I said, we need to do part two. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah, so part two. We always hear that. Hmm? I wanted to talk about the thing when you said Reba mortgage, I was like, ah, that's what I love. That was anyway, anyway. anyway. Actually, in fact, part three. Music is important anyway. Music yeah. is important yeah. or it's not important. We, you know what I mean? Um, and I think I was going to come for the sisters as well, but anyway, oh. they, they're off the hook now. What's your job on the list? Um, I might edit this bit <laughs> <laughs> I'm really proud oh, There's so me. much to work. I've got, yeah, I'm due to do a khutbah on something because Allah must have an Quickly, yeah. Quickly, quickly. Remember, um, do you remember the thing about with East London Masjid in, in, in Ramadan when the somebody raised the issue about, you know, brothers chilling outside the masjid? I heard of this and in passing, but I didn't know the and details. The, and the Imam basically, so there was an issue of brothers. Um, chilling outside the masjid, like chilling outside the sister's entrance essentially and it was raised as a complaint and then when the imam or one of the imams was addressing it he basically kind of flipped it and he was like yeah sisters this is why you shouldn't uh, you know be coming to the masjid in half hijab and it should be wearing properly and you should be dressing modestly etc and everyone was like the criticism was the, the issue is the brothers chilling outside and that and is the main the issue yeah 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 but I heard it started from a TikTok thing. It's like someone said it's banging sisters in East London or something like that. That's what I heard. That's what I heard, bro. But in reality, there's going to be banging sisters in any masjid. Like, there's banging people everywhere yeah. if you use those terminologies. So for people to do stuff like that, this shows evil intentions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he got, I think he got finished. And... Yeah, yeah, I don't true. think that was wise. It's, it's, it, that's that's one of those, um, yeah, wisdom. But I think obviously, I think what it's uh, you know, there should be a excuses. way to do it. Like for excuses. example, it wasn't a time you can't yet. do things at one time. Yeah. The main issue is the concern of the complaint. The brothers are outside the sister side. That is also removing a little bit of context because everybody will hear different stories. I heard as well. Oh, okay, yeah, that that's true. Apparently, sisters were coming out of the masjid and just removing it immediately. Yeah, in so. the club. Oh, hijab, that's what I had, so... But yeah, like I said... But you have people like that. Yeah. It's not, it's, and the thing is, then some only wear it for prayer. Mm. So once they're not praying, they're going to take it off. Yeah, yeah. okay. Obviously, the so issue, there's, there's many yeah, issues, yeah. but it's like, okay, 
you have to basically give priority to the complaint. Mm. So if brothers are there, I said the message, then that's an issue. Mm. Then I can say, okay, let me do this issue first, address that issue. Then I can also address and contributing then, then you, factors. Then you earn their trust and their ears will be more open yeah. to you to hear the, mm. the nasiha that you're trying to give. But anyway. Because um, the reality yeah. is now, we're in a time where we can't say men are doing good, women are doing bad, or well, it's more good, more bad. Like have to Everyone's mash up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have to be balanced. 100. Kind of thing. You have to be balanced. But social media is causing a lot of problems because, like, I'm not like Muslims on social media get me vexed. Mm. Like, my heart boils sometimes because I'm like, yeah, these it's, people. It's, it's too much, man. Yeah, you're really doing shaitan's job and you don't realize. Yeah. Especially it's, these couples. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, foolishness. That's what, that's what our explore page will be full of. Yeah. Okay, they do foolishness or going gym together and it's like just doing foolishness. Yeah, just yeah. Parading the, yeah, long, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And it's like you got the Jahil Muslims looking up to them yeah. as like, this is the ideal couple. They don't show you the arguments. They, they are dependent on all these jahils to like their stuff so they can get more money from it. Mm. So you're paying for the expensive looking house that's basically filled with foolishness mm. and rubbish. Meanwhile, creating a mad, mad standard that you're, which creates a situation where all you're going to do is be disappointed in your own relationship. It's a fit no, bro. But I'm, cause let's, let's meet Jamar in, in Isha in it. So let's, let's. No, inshallah, inshallah we have to. The camera died again, bro. <laughs> We have to do that part yeah, we'll, too, inshallah. We'll do it, we'll do it only, yeah, we'll do it, obviously. We'll, we'll, you're, you're around anyway, you're inshallah. around, welcome, inshallah. Um, yeah, barakallah once no, again. Fika, barakallah. Um, we'll put your your um, details of the masjid, the classes you're doing, great stuff. I think you finished the disease, the disease and it's cured. I haven't finished haven't it. Finished Basically, it. I realised that needs a, needs a, we have to focus on aqidah and tafsir, so I made a change. Okay. Uh, the plan is to do uh, just pre-recorded or any, out, any recorded small clips of disease and the cure okay. separately, inshallah. But the main class is now focused on aqidah to build that foundation cool. and the Quran so you understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that's what everybody needs to... It's, it's, the, it's the foundation, isn't it? Yeah. It's your belief now. Before you, before you start learning other stuff, if you don't have the correct belief, then what are you servicing with this knowledge? Really? Mm. Yeah. Um, so that, that's it. We'll leave it there. Um, we'll wrap up quickly so we can make um, a shine in the masjid, inshallah. Um, Barakallah, listeners. Um, also, make sure you're subscribed and follow the Insta and all that. Just keep updated. Um, I'm seeing the subscriber count is starting to be left quite low down compared to the to the to the other things like this done that so come on guys uh, help us out and make sure when you're listening um share share the share the share the love make sure uh you're giving people an alternative to listen to rather than the big and two pack that they might be polluting their ears with uh i mentioned those two because they're they don't want to be injured yeah you can't, meetings, you can't promote new people yeah, new teams, new teams. <laughs> Yeah, people are crazy in here. Hit me the names for that, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> still, on, that, on that note, uh, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَلَمَّا قَسَى قَلْبِي وَضَاقَتْ مَذَاهِبِي جَعَلْتُ رَجَائِي دُونَ عَفُوكَ سُلَّمَا تَعَاظَمَنِي ذَنْبِي فَلَمَّا قَرَنْتُهُ بِعَفْوِكَ رَبِّي كَانَ عَفُوكَ أَعْظَمَا فَمَا زِلْتَ ذَا عَفْوٍ عَنِ الذُّنُوبِ لَمْ تَزَلْ تَجُودُ وَتَعْفُو مِنَّةً وَتَكَرُّمَا